Tax Break in Wolfboro. I am your host, Ava. And I am Mark. We are coming to you from the Wolfboro Community Television Studios, where we bring your community to view. We say thank you to our friends at the Yum Yum Shop for underwriting next week in Wolfboro. It's through the support of underers and donors like you that programs like this are possible on Wolfboro Community Television. If you would like to underwrite a program for Wolfboro Community Television, please contact our producers at 569-0219. We also want to let your friends and family from out of town know they can watch this program on YouTube. Once you are logged in, just search for Next Week in Wolfboro and you will find our channel. All right, let's start right after the report from the Chamber of Commerce. Mrs. DeVries is ready for the report. We're saying over to you, Mrs. DeVries. Hello and welcome to Next Week in Wolfboro. My name is Mary. I'm inside the Information Center. We are located in the former railroad station. Come by and say hi and pick up your copy of the community calendar of events. It's starting to fill up. The organizations are getting their information to us so we can include it. If you are part of the planning of an event, let's make sure we have your event in this calendar as well. Uh, all right, here we go. So Friday, May 3rd, starting in May, we have lots of activities happening. It's Arbor Day, May 3rd, and Parks and Recreation invites everyone to meet at the Fosfield Pavilion at 10 a.m. That's Friday, May 3rd, and you can uh, be part of the Plant a Tree event that the Parks and Rec is putting on there. Also on Friday, May 3rd, from 3 to 8 p.m., Brewster Academy Art Exhibition is taking place over at the Wolfboro Inn. This is free and open to the public. Come and see the students' artwork. Again, that's Friday, 3 to 8 p.m., and then again on Saturday and Sunday, May 4 and May 5. The hours will be 10 a.m. until 6 p.m. at the Wolfboro Inn. On the 4th, we have It's a Good Night for Singing, and that's 7.30 in the evening at First Congregational Church, and it will be the Clear Lakes Chorale. Everyone's invited to that event, and then they'll be back on the 5th. That's uh, Saturday for a 2 p.m. Uh, performance of singing, again, at the First Congregational Church. Also, on uh, the 5th, the Wolfboro Friends of Music invites you to see the live band Ryan Hood. That's a uh, seven o'clock performance and it will be held in Anderson Hall over at Brewster Academy. What else have we got here? Uh, I know there was something else I wanted to tell you about. Oh, Wolfboro Bike and Walk Day is returning and that is on Friday the 10th of May and Parks and Rec will be set up in Cape Park with some breakfast refreshments, including some coffee, and they would love for you to stop by. If you're out biking or walking, again, that's on Friday, May 10th, the annual Bike and Rock Day. Some of the uh, events and activities that happen every week during the warmer months are coming back, including uh, the model yacht racing, and that takes place in Back Bay every Tuesday and Thursday from 1 to 4 in the afternoon. You can just stroll along the Bridge Falls Path, get onto the Cotton Valley Trail along Foss Field, and you'll see them out there with the model yachts. Hope you can have fun with that. And let me just double check. Yep, I just want to give you a heads up that the uh, Stacy Burns 5K is on Saturday, May 11th. So it's not too soon to get signed up for that. You do that through Parks and Recreation, 569-5639, that again, May 11th, and you meet at Carpenter School at 8.30 in the morning on the 11th, and the race begins at 9.15. I think that's it for now. So with that, remember to shop, dine, and have fun in your town. See ya. Thank you, Mrs. DeVries. Here's some other things we'd like to share with you, starting with Friday, May 3rd, the Kingswood Regional High School baseball team have an away game versus Sohegan at 4 p.m. Go Knights! The Kingswood Regional High School softball team have an away game versus Sohegan at 4 p.m. Go Knights! The Kingswood Regional High School boys tennis team have a home game versus Kennet at 4 p.m. Go Knights! The Kingswood Regional High School girls tennis team have an away game versus Kennet at 4 p.m. 
go Knights! The Kingswood Regional High School Boys Lacrosse team have a home game versus St. Thomas at 5.30 p.m. Go Knights! Saturday, May 4th. The Kingswood Regional High School track team are competing at Pembroke at 10 a.m. Go Knights! Sunday, May 5th. The Wolfboro Friends of Music have a concert featuring Ryan Hood at Brewster's Anderson Hall at 3 p.m. Monday, May 6th. The Kingswood Regional High School baseball team have an away game versus Kennan at 4 p.m. Go Knights! The Kingswood Regional High School softball team have an away game versus Kennan at 4 p.m. Go Knights! The Kingswood Regional High School girls tennis team have an away game versus Manchester West at 4 p.m. Go Knights! The Kingswood Regional High School boys tennis team have a home game versus Windham at 4 p.m. Go Knights! The Kingswood Regional High School girls lacrosse team have an away game versus Timberlane at 5.30 p.m. Go Knights! Cornerstone Christian Academy will be performing Tom Sawyer, directed by Cornerstone Principal Miss Lisa Goodwin, in the Kingswood Arts Center. The show begins promptly at 6.30 p.m. and tickets will be available at the door while they last. The Wolfboro Zoning Board of Adjustment will be meeting at the Wolfboro Town Hall upstairs in the Great Hall at 7 p.m. If you would like to watch this Zoning Board meeting from home, Wolfboro Community Television will be broadcasting this meeting live on Channel 25 and on the WCTV YouTube channel. Tuesday, May 7th. The Wolfboro Public Library provides toddler time story hour at 10.30 a.m. Advanced sign-up is required. The Kingswood Regional High School track team are competing at Co Brown at 4 p.m. Go Knights! The Kingswood Regional High School boys lacrosse team have an away game versus Timberlane at 5.30 p.m. Go Knights! The Wolf Road Public Library are hosting a program with Master Gardener Christian Kaiser on Our Victory Gardens Still Relevant at 6 p.m. The Wolfboro Planning Board will be meeting at the Wolfboro Town Hall upstairs in the Great Hall at 7 p.m. If you would like to watch the Planning Board meeting from home, Wolfboro Community Television will be broadcasting this meeting live on Channel 25 and on the WCTV YouTube channel. Wednesday, May 8th. The Wolfboro Public Library provides preschool story hour at 1 p.m. Advanced sign-up is required. The Kingswood Regional High School baseball team have an away game versus Plymouth at 4 p.m. Go Knights! The Kingswood Regional High School softball team have an away game versus Plymouth at 4 p.m. Go Knights! The Kingswood Regional High School boys tennis team have an away game versus Co Brown at 4 p.m. Go Knights! Thursday, May 9th. The Kingswood Regional High School girls lacrosse team have an away game versus Spaulding at 5.30 p.m. Go Knights! The Wolfboro Police Commission have a meeting at the Wolfboro Town Hall upstairs at the Great Hall at 6 p.m. If you'd like to watch the Police Commission from home, Wolfboro Community Television will be broadcasting this meeting live on Channel 25 and on the WCTV YouTube channel. Sunday, May 12th. Happy Mother's Day! Tuesday, May 14th. The Wolfboro Public Library provides toddler time story hour at 10.30 a.m. Advanced sign-up is required. Wednesday, May 15th. The Wolfboro Public Library provides preschool story hour at 1 p.m. Advanced setup is required. The Wolfboro Board of Selectmen will be meeting at the Wolfboro Town Hall upstairs in the Great Hall at 6.30 p.m. If you would like to watch this Selectman meeting from home, Wolfboro Community Television will be broadcasting this meeting live on Channel 25 and on the WCTV YouTube channel. Friday, May 17th. All Saints Episcopal Church are is hosting a bridge and Mahong luncheon from noon to 4 p.m. Let's send it over to the Parks and Recreation Department. Christine Collins is ready with an update on all things Parks and Rec. We're sending over to you, Christine oh, Collins. Thanks, Mark and Ava. Christine Collins here with Wolfboro Parks and Recreation and just want to share what we have going on. So it is going to be May 1st coming up, and I know we're all excited because we've been getting phone calls off the hook about getting our beach passes. <laughs> so let's do a quick uh, tutorial about what that is and what it means. Okay, so your transfer station uh, passes to the dump in Wolfboro, um, I believe you are allowed three per household, um, will get you into our beaches. Uh, there was a warrant article established a few years ago through the residents of Wolfboro 
um, saying that they wanted the beaches to be um, residents only. So the beaches themselves are open to the public. What we are making residents only is the parking. So what that means is you either need a Wolfboro transfer station sticker or you're hearing a lot of talk about these beach passes. So through Wolfboro Parks and Recreation, you can only get them here. You are allowed two beach uh, passes per household. So that means that you are allowed that, plus your, dump, your transfer station stickers will suffice as a beach pass. The reason why these passes were created um, is because sometimes your dump stickers are on a specific vehicle and maybe that's not your beach vehicle, right? And you might have your sister coming with her kids and you're all going to the beach together, but we don't want to transfer the car seats over. So we're just going to take our beach pass that will get us into the beach and we'll put it on that vehicle. Um, you want to have a valid, we get a new one every year, so you need to have a valid one. We have beach attendants checking those. So as you come to the gate, we ask you to stop and let the beach attendant check your pass and then wave you through. Um, so in order to get a beach pass, what you will need to do is you will need to come by the Pop Whale and Ice and Art Center. We will have on our Facebook page, um, pinned to the top, it will be our beach pass hours. Um, so you know, typically it's going to be Monday through Friday, 8 to 4. Well, we work eight to four, so it'll probably be like nine to three just to give us time in and out to do that. Uh, so we will post the times. Um, when we have special events or weekend hours, we will make sure we have somebody available at that time as well. Um, but for right now, we're just going to start pretty easy uh, because we don't even have beach attendants at the beaches because technically they're not open yet. So you can get your beach passes, but it will be a slow start as we move forward. As we get Closer to the season, we'll have more weekend hours and evening hours available to make sure you get a beach pass. So what you need for that is a valid driver's license. So you'll need a license so you can, um, we know who you are, a picture ID, so we can see who you are. And then um, we are going to look up in the assessing pages um, if you own your property, who the household is um, registered to. So once we see that, then we'll know like, okay, this is Bob, this is his house, he's good to go. If you are renting property, so when we look in the assessing page, we're not going to see that your, your name is on there. So you are going to need to have a utility bill, either a water bill, an electric bill that has a, a most current one. So it should be in the last 30 days that is saying it's your address and um, we, we can recognize that. And then what we will do is we will issue two passes to you. Um, like I said, it's just to use the parking lot. It, to go to the beach, you can walk to the beach. No one's going to stop you from walking on the beach. But to park your car, you're going to need that. And really, it's because those parking lots are small. We don't have a ton of room for people. So we're trying to keep it safe for everyone. Uh, the other thing we have going on is, okay, so that's beach passes. And once we have our all our kids get out of college and we hire our staff, then our beach attendants will be down there. Please remember, it is carry in, carry out for trash. Um, so make sure you're picking up after yourself. We do say no dogs on the beach. Unfortunately, people don't follow those rules and, um, and also don't pick up after their dogs. So you need to remember that, uh, beaches are for everyone. So if your dog is going to the bathroom in the sand and then my two year old come and is playing in the sand and eating it, that's really not going to be pleasant. So that's why we're asking you to respect everyone's opportunity to go to the beach and keep it safe and clean. Um, and I think that is the goal for everyone, right? We all want to enjoy it for years to come. We're creating memories, so let's take care of our beaches. Um, I will want to put a plug out, too. We have a beach um, crew that volunteers over at Cary Beach, because if you've ever been to Cary Beach, all the debris comes in, and it starts now, and it goes all the way through the summer. Uh, it's, it's leaves, it's twigs, it's crazy stuff actually some of it's a little extreme but we have this great committee that has volunteered so until our lifeguards come on and even when our lifeguards come on they still help assist because there's so much debris coming up they'll rake that beach and pull it to the side and then our crew will come in and clean it up so we do appreciate them and I just want to say thank you for that um the bathrooms won't be open until we have staff on duty the only exception to that would be LB Beach which is on a timer uh, again, we ask you to be respectful of our facilities. If you see something that looks um, not right or you have questions about it, please call our office so we can investigate it and check that out. Um, these are your facilities that we're trying to maintain for you. So help us keep it clean and safe for you. And we appreciate that. 
All right, so programming stuff. Let's see what we have coming up. So we have our Arbor Day celebration on May 3rd, on May 10th, oh, oh, back up to the Arbor celebration. Arbor Day um, already happened. I believe it was April 26th, but in Wolfboro, we celebrate it the first Friday in May just to keep the consistency. And we're grateful to say that we are 42 years Tree City USA in Wolfboro. And I know um, over the winter, we had discussions about, you know, a lot of people were upset that trees were being taken down. And you are correct, trees were being taken down. The reason for that is they were diseased trees and where we were trying to stop the spread of it. So we did remove a lot of trees. However, we did also create a fund to replace trees. So on Arbor Day, I believe we are already planting three trees. One of them is in conjunction with the conservation um, committee. So just be aware that we are in the process of planting trees. Um, but we wanted you to know. So we celebrate on May 3rd, just being a Tree City USA, reading the proclamation and planting a few trees to start that process. So um, if you want to come and see it, it's great. It's 10 o'clock at Foss Field over by the tennis court side. Then on May 10th, we have our bike and walk to school day. Again, it's a, that's the day we always celebrate it. It's the second Friday in May. And I know there is an official day, but we just in Wolfboro pick our days that we celebrate it. So it's an opportunity to bike or walk to work to kind of um, help show love for the earth and our air and also get your exercise in. Great opportunity, it's May, start that program. So we partner with Huggins Hospital. Um, I believe it is hospital week, but I think they might have a station outside their hospital. And then we have one over at Cape Park. We just have snacks, we'll give out t-shirts, we'll cheer you on, we have a sticker. So it's definitely something to bring some community event, um, some pride, and just show that we care about our environment and see all your friends walking on the road. Um, and then that Saturday, we are having the Stacy Burns race. I believe it's the 15th, I think it's the 15th annual. Um, you have to, you can pre-register, which is great if you do, but you can also sign up day of. Uh, it's a great local 5K. It starts at Carpenter School, goes all the way to Crest, almost Crescent Lake, um, and then comes back. So it's a good little 5K right before Mother's Day. So definitely want to help support local. And I believe it goes to a scholarship for a Kingswood student, um, I believe, heading into the nursing program. So just little information on that one. And um, we are in the process of hiring for staff. So um, I know a lot of parents are looking for jobs for their kids, and I think that's great. But we encourage you to have your teen call us. Like, it looks good when your teen is doing the reaching out and trying to get a job. We're super friendly here. We're not going to bite their head off. So send them on over. Have them come and have a conversation. Also, check um, our website. We do have, uh, between Facebook and our website, we are advertising some job fair opportunities where they can just come from like four to six at night, come chat with us, see what it entails to work here, see what opportunities we have and get to know the crew you could be working with. So we do encourage that. Um, you know, after COVID, when COVID happened, we kind of lost a lot of our staff and we're rebuilding that. So we would love to meet the whole next generation of people to come work here. Um, and help with the use. So we have day camp uh, counselors, lifeguards, beach attendants, some maintenance, um, swim lesson instructors. Um, so some of those, you know, if you start off in high school, you could go all the way through college. Um, so that, I mean, to be honest, that's how I started. That's how a lot of the people who work here, they started was part-time seasonal work. And then it, it grew into a different opportunity. So definitely check it out. We'd be interested in seeing some of you for that. And then just stay tuned. Uh, the one thing I cannot stress enough is that if you see a program that you're interested in, sign up sooner than later. As we get closer to things, if we only have two people register, we usually cancel programs for that. So we want to make sure we can run everything. So you don't want to wait till the last minute to register because then it's a missed opportunity that we might have to cancel something. So that's all we have for now. Hope to see you soon and back to you guys. Thank you, Christine Collins. Joyce Davis is at the Wolfboro Public Library with an update. We're sending you over to you, Joyce Davis. Thanks, Ava and Mark. 
Carroll County UNH Master Gardener from Wolfboro, Kristen Kaiser, will present her program, Our Victory Gardens Relevant Today, on May 7th at 6 p.m. That's a Tuesday night. She'll offer a host of reasons why it's more important than ever to grow your own food. And come and explore the hidden history of Lake Winnipesaukee with local author and historian Glenn Knobloch on Wednesday, May 8th at 6 o'clock. Glenn will discuss the many facets of this history, including the real story behind America's oldest summer resort. This fascinating and enlightening bits of knowledge he shares will certainly change how you view New Hampshire's Big Lake. This program is made possible by a grant from New Hampshire Humanities. Our second Tuesday book group will meet on May 14th at 1 o'clock to discuss A Paragon by Colin McCann. You still have time to pick up a copy and join us. Join mountain climber Steve Arsenault of Wolfboro on Wednesday, May 15th at 6 o'clock and learn about Steve's decades climbing in places such as Canada, Yosemite, Australia, the UK, Wyoming, and nearby Cathedral Ledge. Steve's got lots of wonderful photos, photos he'll share with us. Julie Brown from the Wentworth Watershed Foundation will speak about gardening for wildlife on Wednesday, May 22nd at 6 o'clock in the Bradley Room. Find out what to plant to attract more wildlife to your yard. If you're looking to get out more and meet new people, consider dropping in on one of our free weekly activities. We have Cribbage Club on Mondays at 1, Knitting Group Wednesdays at 11, and a Scrabble Group Friday mornings at 10.30. Genealogy enthusiasts have several options at the library. The Lakes Region Genealogy Interest Group offers one-on-one -on -one genealogy help in our Thayer Local History Room every Wednesday from 10 to 3. Call the library to find out more about setting up an appointment. The Lakes Region Genealogy Interest Group will present Essential Genealogy Research Concept and Tools the first Thursday of every month from 10.30 to noon. Classes are in person in the Bradley Room. And their Irish Genealogy Special Interest Group will meet next on Thursday, May 9th at 11.15. We have some great programs for kids, teens, and families coming up too. There'll be a local author's book program for ages nine and up on Thursday, May 16th at 3.30. The Dove Who Inspired Beyond Barbed Wire by Kimberly Smith and Andrea Ackerley. Meet these local authors and illustrators as they read their book, share framed illustrations, and present an art activity for kids ages nine and up. Registration is required. That's it for now. Back to you, Mark and Ava. Thank you, Joyce Davis. Father Cole, Deacon Chris, and Deacon Charlie are at the St. Catherine Drexel Catholic Church with their port. We're saying over to you, Father Cole and crew. Well, hi, Ava. Hi, Mark. Uh, Father Bob Cole here. Uh, and with Deacon Chris Conley and a great surprise, Deacon Charlie Ferraro has returned. Welcome back. Welcome home. Thank you, Father. It's great to be back. So we, we're got, we have three deacons here now at St. Catherine Drexel, so I am absolutely delighted. Absolutely delighted. Now here it is Friday now, May the 3rd. We've begun a new month, and this weekend is going to be the 6th Sunday of Easter. A long uh, seven-week celebration of resurrection and life of, of Jesus Christ and our resurrection in Him. We share in His resurrection. We're not floating out there on our own. We're living in Him, and He lives in us, this great, uh, this great unity. So here on this Friday morning, May the 3rd, we have Eucharistic Adoration going on right now in the church following the 8 o'clock Mass. And then at 11 o'clock, our homeschoolers show up. Uh, they come twice a month, every other Friday, and they'll be here with us today at 11. And they do Eucharistic Adoration at 12.30, which is Quite an event to see the little kids uh, praying before the Blessed Sacrament. Uh, and they stay until about, about 3 o'clock this afternoon and have their classes uh, in, the, in the parish hall. Now, 
at 4.30, the men's group is having their annual retreat. Uh, they have a, a, a priest come in every year. This year is Father Stephen Imbarato from Florida, and uh, he's an expert on male spirituality, men's spirituality. And uh, so he's giving the retreat. Uh, it begins at 4.30. You can show up. The men are going to have pizza for dinner. Uh, he'll have a couple of conferences tonight, followed by adoration and confession available. Then you go home at 9 o'clock, come back tomorrow morning. Morning Mass is at 8 o'clock. You'll have a few more conferences and wrap it up with, with lunch. Uh, but really, it's a great opportunity. Who speaks about male spirituality? It's, it's just a, a great opportunity. So please, if you're free, uh, come this afternoon, and then come tomorrow morning, uh, the 4th of May, uh, and that would be absolutely uh, terrific to have, to have you here. And then, of course, Sunday, uh, we'll have the uh, 8 o'clock Mass at uh, 8.30 Mass, followed by Religious Ed and the 10.30 Mass. And then the Journey Group is meeting at noon. Now, the Journey Group is for people who've lost a loved one, and they come together and share how they're doing. Uh, they share their memories. They have lunch for them. Uh, so it's really a, uh, j just a good opportunity. It's not... It's not a professional uh, counseling session. It's just people sharing their faith in heaven and in eternal life. So Saturday at 4 o'clock, Sunday, 8.30 and 10.30, we'd love to have you. Well, Deacon Charlie, tell us how it went this year in, in Florida. Well, you know, it was like it was up here. The climate change down there was very odd. I mean, usually you go down, it's nice and warm. and. We got a lot of rain, a lot of high winds. It really wasn't a typical Florida uh, uh, winter down there until the last month or two in Florida. Now, what is that all about? I mean, our Pope has been talking about the environment and how we have to take care of the environment and that sort of thing. So it was kind of an interesting lesson that way. Uh, and our parish down there, Father, goes from 4,000 to 12,000 during the winter months. Uh, and so we were very, very busy down there this year. Lots going on uh, and lots of uh, help. Uh, you know, working with the confirmation and the First Communion children, uh, it's, it's been very interesting. Uh, we give uh, presentations to them about what confirmation is all about to the parents and to the, uh, the high schoolers. But the First Communion ones were even more interesting because a lot of the uh, families down, the young families, are Hispanic and they're from South America. Uh, and uh, so we were talking about how, and everybody knows this, you can't fool little kids, right? They know when you're not serious about what you're talking about. So we went on and we did a little bit of that presentation to them. And I was really surprised. A number of the moms came up and talked afterwards and they said, you know, a lot of the Hispanics that come up from South America are in really irregular uh, relationships that have to be sort of squared away somehow. And so um, they said, look, that makes sense. I want to be able to go to communion with my child and let them know how important communion is to us. Uh, so that was an interesting revelation and uh, we spent some time doing some counseling down there which was helpful. Uh, so. It was a very busy, busy uh, time down there, uh, and I'm not complaining, Father, but I didn't get a chance to play as much golf as I usually do. Oh. So my game kind of went to heck. Ah. Uh, and people down there were saying, now, wait a minute, your handicap is 18? They thought I was sandbagging them. Ah. So uh, the other thing that happened is you can see I'm wearing a little white patch up here on my head. I had mo surgery down there. Uh, and it was it was all taken care of, but it's a long process for the healing. So I'll probably be wearing this for another month or so. But they were all teasing me down there, Father. They thought I was thinking of becoming Jewish because <laughs> they said it looked like you were wearing a Jewish skull yeah, okay. yeah. yeah, and so I said, well, you know, now that you brought it up, maybe I should consider it for a little bit. <laughs> so uh, it was a great, great winter down there. We're happy to be back. 
uh, and uh, very excited. Uh, we're about to take a new puppy into our homes, and uh, we're all excited about that. And Nancy had a wonderful, my wife had a wonderful winter down there, played at golf, and I think she, her pro, her game progressed more than my father. Wow. Uh, so I, I have to catch up a little bit. We'll have to do something about that. Yes, we, we will. I, I, what are you doing on Tuesday? <laughs> <laughs> so um, uh, do, do most of the clergy there speak Spanish as well as English? Uh, certain ones do. We have uh, a pastor does, he's very fluent, and he just was assigned a priest a couple of years ago, Father David, who's very fluent in Spanish. Uh, and the other priests uh, are pretty much English, uh, but they all have unique, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, unique uh, uh, blessings that they bring to the altar when they, when they say Mass. and. One I call the singing priest, he loves to sing, and when he's finished with his homily, he sings a song and he invites everybody to sing with him. Uh, and then he says uh, something to the effect, uh, can I have an amen? And if the you know, people in the pew go amen, he goes, I can't hear you. <laughs> and he keeps going and going. He says, the people across the street need to hear your amen. <laughs> so he's, he's terrific. and. Uh, there's others that just have uh, great homilies and great stories, and uh, it's 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 great because the parish has such a mix, and for the pastor it's very helpful <clears throat> to have. I think we have something like seven or eight masses on a weekend on Saturday and Sunday. The other thing I want to mention, you know, everybody thinks you know I'm the only person from up here that's down there in Florida, but I can't tell you how many people I met down there were parishioners here. It's like it's like there's a club going on, Father. And so they would come in and they say, "Don't you remember me?" And of course, I have a hard time remembering names because when you go back and forth, there's a lot of people you got to remember their names. So, uh, and then they would come over and say hello. So, uh, they're all on their way back. Well, that's, that's good to hear. And uh, it's great to see familiar faces when you're down there. You know, and and th being in New Hampshire is not typical of the church. I, I could be wrong, but I think one quarter now of the Catholic Church in the United States is Hispanic. Yes. Is it about right? That's about right. And, it, and it's growing. So uh, it, it could be 50% by, uh, by the, the year uh, 2050. It is, it's growing. They're having children. Okay. Yes. And, and we, need, we need more children. Uh, you know, we, when I was growing up, they talked about overpopulation. Now we're not replacing ourselves, and we can't find help uh, in, in some of the the medical profession, especially looking for help, and the uh, the restaurants and, and hospitality. They can't find enough help. We're not having enough children, and if we don't do that, uh, we will not survive as a society. You have to have you have to have children, and you you can see because that's what happened in China. They stopped. They they thought they were having too many children, and now they don't have enough to support their factories. Yeah. Uh, so it happens, and you know we have to be aware of it. And this is a pro-life month for us too. Uh, uh, that was celebrated in uh, Florida, and I'm sure they're celebrating up here. And it's Mother's Day. Right. Coming up in a couple of days, right? That's right. That's so right. Uh, next weekend. And, yeah. And so it's a good thing to think of and uh, to support. And Barbara. Uh, uh, Richards. Richards and I have been talking about how we can support young mothers who need help financially uh, and uh, in some of the poorer communities up here in our neighborhood. So we hope to, to, to work on that uh, together uh, and start to do that because they need help. They need to be encouraged. They need to be uh, supported, uh, especially first-time moms. Good. Good. Well, Deacon Chris, do you want to say anything? No, I think uh, that was. It's good to have you back. It's good to be here. I, I walked in, I saw his jacket hanging, and I said, "Whoa, this is good." <laughs> All right, well, we're we're back now, and come. The door is open. We'd love to have you. Uh, if you want to join the church, we'd love to have you. Let us know. We're ready to do all we can to welcome you. So, happy Easter, everybody! Resurrect, resurrection and life. The daffodils are out. They're out. Thank you, Father Cole, Deacon Chris, and Deacon Charlie. Thank you for tuning in to our weekly program.
Remember, there's always something to do in and around Wolfboro. If you'd like to add an event to our program, please contact Wolfboro Community Television Station at 569-0219. Or send an email to wctv25 at gmail.com. We hope to see you out and about. And we look forward to seeing you next week. With clear eyes and full hearts, I am Ava. And I am Mark for Wolfboro Community Television. Bringing your community to you!